thank you for joining us at Hope Lutheran Church for Worship Online. If you could do us a favor, if you could like and subscribe to our YouTube channel, it's going to help us reach more people with the good news of Jesus Christ, no matter where they are, whether they are here locally, whether they're here in our nation, whether they're here globally, or if they're like Pastor Carl and on a cruise ship right now. You know, Pastor Carl the other day told me that, or was telling someone that he's been on over a hundred cruises, and I wasn't sure if he was talking about this year. Yeah, <laughs> so keep him and Cheryl in your prayers as they make it back and they will be with us next week. Well, we have a lot of great things happening here at Hope. Uh, it is Camp Hope that's starting this week. So it is going to be a wild time. So if your kids are like my kids at home, beating the heat, not knowing what to do, go to hopepd.org and sign them up for Camp Hope today. And also, uh, if you want to help partner with us in reaching more people with that good news of Jesus Christ, there are a couple ways you can do so. One, you can mail in an offering to Hope Lutheran Church at 45900 Portola Avenue in Palm Desert, California, 92260. You can simply text to give by texting 84321. And finally, you can go to Hope pd.org. There you'll find not just ways to give, but all of the incredible ministry that's happening right here at Hope. So visit hopepd.org today. Now let's worship on this Trinity Sunday. The good news for today comes from the book of Matthew, the 28th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now the 11 disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshiped him. But some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. The good news of our Lord Praise to you, O Christ. And let us pray. Gracious God, may the words of our mouths and the meditations of our hearts be pleasing to you this day, O Lord. Amen. Well, today is Holy Trinity Sunday. Yeah, I can feel your enthusiasm. I have yet to meet anyone who would call Trinity Sunday their favorite celebration of the year. And for good reason. That's because unlike all the other seasons and special days of the church year, we don't get to dig into the interesting stories of the Bible. Most other festivals of the church celebrate an event. We commemorate happenings in the life of Christ, from his miraculous birth, his light being revealed on Epiphany, the voice from heaven at his baptism, the awe of the transfiguration, and Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem amidst palms and cheers. We celebrate the empty tomb of Easter, the glorious ascension, the chaotic coming of God's Spirit to the church at Pentecost, all leading up to Holy Trinity Sunday, when we celebrate a church doctrine. It's like there's this raucous party of Easter and Pentecost that suddenly comes to a screeching halt. And now, a celebration of church doctrine. So let's get right down to it, shall we? Here we go. God is three persons and one being. God is one and yet three. The Father is not the Son or the Spirit. The Son is not the Father or the Spirit. The Spirit is not the Father or the Son. But the Father, Son, and Spirit are all God and God is one. So to review, one plus one plus one equals one. Got it? Neither do I. It's no wonder that so many of the early church councils were called to try and make sense of the Trinitarian formula. The Council of Nicaea in 325, the First Council of Constantinople in 381, the Council of Ephesus in 431, and so on and so on. The church took its time coming up with the doctrine of the Trinity, but it's hard to see what there is to actually celebrate. Where is the good news in a nearly unexplainable doctrine? But maybe the fact that the nature of God is unexplainable is the good news. Sure, it would be easier for everyone if God were a bit easier to peg down. But that's not what is revealed in Scripture. Here we have a hard to peg down God from the very beginning. Literally, 
The Genesis account does not say, let me make humankind in my own image, but let us make humankind in our own image according to our likeness. This is not a me God, but a we God. God from the very beginning is God as community. The triune nature of God assures us that God is in fellowship with God's self. In the beginning is creator, word, and spirit, all co-mingling to bring forth creation. Here, God creates communally. The three aspects of God remain distinct while the identity remains one through mutual giving and receiving back and forth together throughout time. Maybe this is not some dusty doctrine, but the holy product of a God who pours out God's own communal self into the creation. And here's the best part. This image of the relational dance of God with God's self is wide enough to include us, the created. The mutual indwelling of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit offers us and all creation the divine space in which to live the fullness of our identity as beloved children of God. There is a beautiful artistic depiction of this welcome we have into the life of the Trinity in an Eastern Orthodox icon from the 15th century by Andre Rublev. It depicts the three angels who visited Abraham in Genesis but the painting is full of symbolism and is interpreted as an icon of the Holy Trinity. At the time of Rublev, the Holy Trinity was the embodiment of spiritual unity, peace, harmony, mutual love, and humility. The three figures in the icon are depicted as angels seated at the altar table. They have identical faces, but their postures and clothing differ as though we are looking at the same figure shown in three different ways. But it's the way in which the figures relate to one another which is so compelling. The Father looks to the Son, gesturing towards this Word made flesh. Christ gazes back at the Father but points to the Spirit, and the Spirit opens up the circle to receive the viewer. Between the Spirit and the Father in the Trinity icon is an open space at the table in which you are invited to sit. Here we see an image of God's relational circle into which we are welcomed. The Father sends the Son and the Son sends the Spirit and the Spirit welcomes us to the table. It's an image of how God relates to God's self and to us. But we need not visit an art museum to get another image of the Trinity. We need only to look up. I was reading an article that said due to collective efforts across the globe to care for creation, the Earth's ozone layer is slowly recovering. You probably know that the ozone is essential to protecting the Earth from harmful ultraviolet rays. But what I didn't know is that the ozone is made up of a molecule that is three elements of oxygen, O3. The three elements of oxygen, the very element that we need to breathe and live, working together to sustain life, creation, and protect us from harm all working as one. Three elements that are same, but unique, working together. Amazing, isn't it? A triune image of God is not an unknown God like the statue Paul encounters in Athens, but is a God who is revealed in the word and in the meal shared among the beloved community throughout the ages and in all places. This triune God made known through the scripture and the prophets the cross and the gospel, the baptismal font and the table. This God is the one who welcomes us into the sacred life of mission commanded by Jesus Christ. Perhaps it would be a lot easier for everyone if we had a God who was a li little bit easier to peg down, but thankfully that is not the case. Instead, we have a triune God who is impossible to explain, yet reveals God's self not in the minutia of doctrine, but in community, in bread, in wine, and in the waters of baptism. Through the Trinity, God welcomes us into the relationship and community of God's love poured out for the sake of the world. And there is always a place for you. Thanks be to God. Amen. And let us pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks for the gift of the Trinity in which you invite us in 
into your mutual relationship. Lord, even though we may not fully understand the Trinity, we understand that you love us in and through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. And it's in his name we pray. Amen. continue our worship as we proclaim our faith found in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And now let us prepare our hearts to receive the Lord's Supper. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. 
As we are gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as our Lord Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. The body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. And now may the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And before you go and receive the benediction, if you could do us a favor and like and subscribe to our YouTube channel, it helps us reach more people with that good news of Jesus Christ. Now to see the benediction, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and grant to you his everlasting peace. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen.